Hey, it's Huck. And I'm sorry, this doggone phone just drives me nuts. Hey, listen, this is going to be very short, but I just kind of wanted to get a little poll going if I can. Uh, for those of you who watch it, you know, I am kind of a, a big fan of America's Got Talent. Now, there's a lot of things about the show I don't like. I don't like the fact that magicians and ventriloquists seem to win all the time and that the singers kind of get short shrift. Every year, it seems I always pick the singer to win, and every year they don't. But, you know, anyway, the reason I wanted to do this real quick tonight is because, of course, uh, tonight they're um, going to decide, I guess, you know, five of the um, people are going to get into the finals out of uh, 11 contestants uh, that uh, performed last night, and that's coming up here shortly. And then, I guess, next week, the other five or whatever... Um, uh, will be uh, judged to get into the finals. At any rate, I've been watching this since the beginning of this season, and I had kind of early on from the, from the point of auditions, kind of picked the you know the five or six acts I thought I'd like to see go through, and among them were well initially Tape Face, although I think his first performance was by far his best. I've not been that impressed since. Um, the the fourteen year old that sings like an opera singer I kind of liked. Um, at least I can't deny the talent there. Um, the Brian Crum, or whatever his name is, the, the, um, singer with the, uh, I don't know, they made a big thing about the fact that he was bullied a lot, uh, maybe because of his, uh, sexual orientation or whatever, but, uh, legitimately, um, impressed with his vocals. Um, I liked Edgar, you know, the, the threesome, the kind of folk kind of group with the, the mother or daughter and, uh, whatever, um, at any rate, one of the early acts that I kind of um, identified as someone that I thought uh, would go very far in this competition, I just wasn't sure how far, was, um, as it turns out, um, the reason I'm doing the video. And that is the 12-year-old Grace Vanderwall. Now, Grace Vanderwall comes from the Hudson Valley in New York somewhere, um, and... Uh, she plays with a ukulele, and she has this very unique, distinctive singing style and vocal quality. Um, she's got kind of a raspiness to her voice, um, and she writes all of her own original songs. And uh, I was struck by her the first time I saw her, although I had the same problem that uh, I guess is uh, uh, quite um, apparent as you read through the comments on any of the videos or whatever that have been uh, of her performances online, and that is that a lot of people, like me, you know, couldn't always understand the words of, you know, the lyrics of her song. Uh, and um, frankly, I don't find that to be as annoying as I guess some people do. Uh, my feeling is that there's a lot of songs on the radio um, for as long as I can remember that, you know, the first time or two you hear it on the radio or, you know, see it performed, you don't necessarily understand the lyrics. I mean, there's a few songs back from the 70s and 80s that I grew up listening to that um, I probably been singing the wrong lyrics to all my life. But at any rate, that being said, I kind of feel that um, uh, one of the things that's intriguing about this particular girl is that she seems to break all of the rules that um, normally you would be expected to follow. And, um, you know, in a competition like this, uh, for instance, I mean, the judges have made no secret of the fact um, on this show and others that, uh, you know, it's always a bad idea to sing your own original song, sing something that's more familiar. And they, you know, we've heard them time and time again admonish people for, you know, trying to perform or thinking of performing their own song. And yet the opposite is true of this girl. Um, her voice is um, quivers. She shows her nervousness. I mean, I mean, she's broken character many times in her songs, you know, giggling. A lot of it's nervousness. A lot of it, I mean, you can literally hear her quivering at the start of some of her songs. Um, she doesn't always hit all the right notes. Um, um, despite all of that, she has, my understanding, is she has received something like three to five times as much audience response to her performances as anybody else in this competition. And I'm um, going to tell you that I think I understand why. Uh, she is unique in this competition. And uh, 
uh, she can break those rules, one, because the quality of her lyrics are amazing, two, um, her distinctive voice is just unlike anything you normally see at anybody close to that age. Um, and um, at any rate, I have a friend who's from time to time watched a couple of these performances with me, and he has the exact opposite point of view, which I guess is an unusual. My understanding is that uh, as far as Grace Vanderwall goes, apparently you either really like her or you really can't stand her and find her as annoying as, you know, as anything. So I'm kind of curious for those of you who watch the show and know what the heck I'm talking about here. You know, how do you fall on this? Um, like her? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? Can't stand her? Don't understand how she's gotten this far. My feeling is she's got an honest opportunity here to get not just into the finals, but come down to the final, you know, five or even final two contestants. Probably the only thing Heidi Klum and I have ever agreed on, by the way. Um, but my friend Dustin uh, feels that, um, well, he can't understand how on earth this girl got this far. So anyway... I'm just going to throw that out there and find out exactly how you feel. And I'm going to get back to watching this because uh, the um, cut down here show that's going to tell us whether or not she and four others get in and which four those, which five those are, it's going to begin in about 15 minutes. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Huck. I'll see you again real soon. Oh, maybe. <laughs>